Afternoon. What a week it's been. How good does it sound to have a few more years of Stephen Schumacher? Since I've arrived in the city, I've felt at home. I love it here, my family love it here. This club is like no other. It's unique, and I am incredibly proud to be the manager of Plymouth Argyle. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome along to Argyle TV. Yeah, how good. Stephen Schumacher signing an extension to his contract, keeping him at Argyle until the end of 20, the 2026-27 season. Uh, four and a half more years, two-year extension to the deal he already had. Brilliant way to celebrate going up to Staffordshire, taking on Burton Albion, isn't it? Um, probably worth the train travel disruptions that we've had. And for the fans that are up, in Staffordshire to take on Burton today. They'll be happy knowing that Stephen Schumacher will be there. We'll be, we'll be hearing from the man himself a little bit later on about that new deal. We want, of course, hear from you on what you think about it and what you think it means for the football club as well. Here are all the contact details for us. Follow us on social media. You can get in touch at, with us on social media, at Argyle on Twitter and Facebook. You can also drop a comment in the section below this video if you're watching on YouTube. But so much to look forward to over the next 45 minutes or so here on Argyle TV. As I said, we'll be hearing from the gaffer uh, on how he feels about signing that brand new contract. Ryan Hardy talks us through what it's been like in the camp for the last couple of weeks and how he's looking forward to another away trip this weekend. And we'll also touch on the women's team as well, who have a game at Home Park tomorrow against Ipswich Town. You can um, still buy tickets for that game. We'll be building up to it as well. So make sure you stay tuned for that. We will, of course, also have all the team news ahead of kickoff. So, so much to cram in. And I'm delighted to say that helping us with that is a former uh, academy coach here at Argyle, mm -hmm. now the lead, lead coach is at Marjon. Welcome to the Argyle family, Aaron. It's lovely to have you with us. Thanks very much, Charlie. I'm really excited to be part of this kind of journey and family today. So, um, yeah, brand new for me, uncharted territory, but thoroughly looking forward to it. You're, uh, well, well, we're thoroughly looking forward to it as well. You're someone who knows a couple of the Argyle squad team very well. Mike Cooper and Adam Randall were... Um, well, you were, you were the coach of both of them for, for, for many a year. Um, so uh, excited to get stuck into that sort of chat um, a little bit later on. As, as I said, we'll bring you team news in just a moment. First, though, let's hear from the gaffer, shall we? Stephen Schumacher on him signing that brand new contract. A new contract at, at Argyle. Just what, what does it mean for you? Yeah, I'm absolutely buzzing. I'm delighted. It means, means everything, really. I think the support that I've received from the board from Andrew, from Simon, over the last 12 months since I've been. The manager has been incredible. That's before we speak about the support we've had from the fans. Over the last 12 months has been different class and sort of it's been a good start. And to top that off now, we're 12 months into the job almost, to extend my contract and stay here for a little bit longer. Yeah, I couldn't be any happier. It was all quite whirlwind, wasn't it, when you got the job? almost 12 months ago and it what would you say your kind of main emotions since you've been in this position well i think um so many different emotions but the one that yeah probably probably the most is just pride like every time i walk out in, in the tunnel i'm like wow 
sort of have to pinch yourself a little bit. So, obviously, as you've just said, was thrown in at the deep end a little bit, came so round so quick. You're now the manager of Plymouth Argyle, and it still hasn't fully sunk in. So, pride, um, yeah, I would say it's the, the biggest emotion, and so just trying to do my best all the time, and, and hopefully we keep getting some good results that we're getting at the moment. Yeah, it's not gone too badly <laughs> um, uh, at all. Has has it gone as well, better than than what you would have expected? I, I could pro yeah, probably say better than expected because when we started and um, the back end of last season, we had a brilliant start and and everybody was waiting for us to fall away and drop off. We didn't do that until obviously the last day where we just missed out on the playoffs. But it was an incredible achievement to get 80 points. So again, this summer everybody is saying, well, they won't be able to do that again. There's no way that Plymouth Argyle can sustain their push with what they've got and we're proving everybody wrong so yeah I, I'm happy to keep proving people wrong I'm happy to keep pushing this team as far as we can push them and keep dragging every single ounce of quality out the players and everything single ounce of effort that we can because that's what it's going to take if if we're going to stay towards the top end of this division which where we want to be what do you see is in store for Argyle in the in the next few years well I think everybody can see the the improvements that the club are making year on year, we're getting we're getting bigger, we're getting a bit more organised, the structure behind the scenes is getting better, the revenues that are coming in are getting better, so people can see from the outside, it's not just us now in the building who are seeing that we're improving, I think everybody up and down the country can see what we're doing is something, something special, so I can see as long as we all stick to the plan, we're all on the same page, and we all keep trying to improve in every department, not just the football department, in every department, then the club can get where it wants to get to, which is in the championship. What, what do you think this contract says, um, firstly, for you, but then also for the football club, that they are keen to have someone like you, who's made an incredible start as one of the most exciting managers in, in the country? What does it say about the club as well and their ambition? So for me, it says that I believe in this plan. So I'm fully committed to it. I have been since the day we came down here in 2019. The plan was to get where we want to try and get to and have worked that hard every single day to try and achieve that. This is just, this contract is um, another step in the plan. So obviously a lot of when you're doing well and people start speculating and people start talking about where your manager's going to go, it's, it can be unsettling, can be a distraction, but I think this commitment that the club have shown me and the commitment that I've shown, it shows that I believe in the plan and, and I want to get to where we want to get to. What does being manager of Argyle mean? What, does it, what will it mean to, to, to be manager of Argyle in years to come? It means everything to me. I don't, don't take it for granted. It's, um, the, the, the football club is a huge part of the city and I understand I've been here for a few years now and I understand how, how much it means to everybody. I've got friends down here who it make, means everything to. I'm not an Argyle fan growing up, I'm an Everton fan, but now I am full on invested into the Green Army, my family are the same and yeah it means everything to me and I'd say that's why I need to continue to keep working hard, I'll never rest and think oh, I've cracked it because football's got a funny way of of yeah making you look stupid if you, if you ever get that carried away so yeah I'll keep working as hard as I can for everybody connected with the club and the fans and yeah we'll look forward to some Good days in the future, hopefully. Yeah, we'll speak a little bit more about that in, in a moment. Great news, as I mentioned. Let's start off, though, by getting the team news that uh, Stephen Schumacher has picked for this afternoon's game. A uh, couple of changes, four, three in total for Argyle, um, and potentially a change of formation as well. The, the big talking point from that team sheet is seeing Mikel Miller back in the squad. He's on the bench, but also no James Wilson. So the changes are Gillespie back in for Wilson. First appearance for a couple of weeks for Macaulay Gillespie. Matt Butcher in for Niall Ennis and Sam Cosgrove starts up front. Ryan Hardy dropping to the bench along with Niall Ennis. Um, looking at that, uh, Aaron, and, and kind of initial sort of reactions, it, it looks like it might be a change of shape for Argyle, potentially for defenders the two holders and, and three and behind the striker. Um, what, do, what, are your, what are your initial th thoughts on that? Well, I, I think um, it might be a circumstantial change because of injuries. 
or it might also be aligned to the fact that they um you know they they've been a little bit vulnerable and perhaps down the channels in more recent weeks so the back four will shore up those and plug those gaps um and the the two sitters in front will will act as an additional screen and block as well so i think um going with an element of caution is probably a wise move especially with the um you know the recent form home form of burton in particular um so hopefully that gives them the the springboard that they need to shore up the the real line and, and then they can take it you know on the, on the front foot into the ascendancy and the attacking phases uh, we'll, we'll talk on on Adam Randall in just a moment because it's someone you know really well and it, it looks like it could be a new position for him today but but firstly he's gone with Sam Cosgrove up up front we'll be hearing from Ryan Hardy in a moment he has changed it up and mixed it and the, the Sam Cosgrove option away from home is something that he's gone to quite a lot we did it a couple of weeks ago against Grimsby did it against Wickham it worked perfectly um just just that focal point potentially do you think up front I think so yeah I mean if if you've got someone who can pin the ball in and alleviate that bit of pressure from the from the you know the back line then you can get the, the team up and if you can get them up you can get runners beyond him then you become more of a threat so I think having someone who can stick the ball invite his teammates to either run in front or run beyond um, creates that that opportunity to to penetrate their back line. Um, and I think it looks like that's what he's trying to do. So it's a wise move because you need to play a certain way away from home. Um, you know, I'm led to believe that Burton's quite a tight pitch and quite a small stadium. So there's going to be an element of pressure from the fans. So, you know, they've got to try and uh, alleviate that pressure as quickly and as and as possibly as, po as they can as they go forward. Yeah. And the other thing, if it, if it is a formation we think, so 4-2-3-1 with, with Houghton and, and Butcher sitting in, Randall playing in that 10 with, with the two wingers being... Morgan Whisker and, and Barley Mumba. That's a position that we haven't seen Barley Mumba play, but also we have seen Barley Mumba play <laughs> because he's that flying wing back. So he, we, you'd imagine he'd probably fit that winger position quite well, wouldn't he? Absolutely. I think, you know, the, the talk of his form has been about his attacking prowess. So, you know, he's had a number of assists. He's had, he's chipped in with three or four goals already this season as well. So I think it will just be a natural thing for him to just go slightly higher. Um, and then... I like the fact that he plays on that left side because he has the capability of going outside and inside. And if you've got an element of uncertainty as a defender, then it, 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 it promotes that kind of unpredictability. Um, and with, with Whitaker on the opposite side being more left foot dominant, he likes to cut in and shoot. So again, they're, they're, they're setting up in their, in their strengths, um, which can only add to hopefully a, a win today. As I said, we'll, we'll talk on Adam Randall a little bit later. Let's have a look at the Burton side. Um, just ignore the Brendan Galloway picture in there. Um, <laughs> but they've made a few changes as well. Do you know Marmory are uh, making four changes, actually, from their 3-3 draw at home against Charlton last weekend. One of those changes is in goal, with Ben Garrett coming back in between the sticks and veteran defender Adrian Mariapa recalled as well. Um, we, we mentioned their form, Aaron, just a moment ago. They're unbeaten in, in five at home in all competitions. And they, they do seem to have just picked up a little bit, uh, especially in the last month or so, because they had an absolutely disastrous start to the season, didn't they? Absolutely. I think um, I think you only have to look at the recent, I think it's eight points that they've accrued of the last five home games. And if you look at Argyle's last five away games, I think they've accrued nine points. So there's definitely a kind of a leveller here. Um, and I think maybe the change in management has promoted a change in style, perhaps a change in belief. And, and, and because they've picked up a few points more regularly, closer together, maybe their players are starting to believe in their process. So you know, absolutely, they've got to go with um, Argyle. Have got to approach this with caution, but also still trust themselves that they're capable of winning the game. They've also got some some interesting attackers. Uh, Victor Adwayejo, uh, their top scorer this season. He's got seven, I think, in the league, um, approaching double figures in all competitions. And they've also they're handing a debut to, to Joe Dodu, who was signed last week, um, a, a player who's been on Leicester's books, was up in Scotland with Rangers for a bit. He's kind of been out in the wilderness, but they're interesting players. They're, they're probably, well, they're not, they're, they're not probably, they're definitely dangers for Argo, especially the form of, of Adeboyejo. Oh, uh, undoubtedly. I mean, especially the new signing as well. He's got a point to prove. He wants to come in and make a, a good, a good start to his new, you know, with his new play teammates and his new club. And, and you know, I've watched the highlights of, of the Charlton game last week, and and the front player is, is extremely dangerous. Um, so they 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 can't afford to give him too much room. I think his 
the goal that put them 3 2 up was a terrific strike. It was a, belt, wasn't it? It was a great strike. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Argon need to identify that and not allow him too much room. If they can suffocate his space quickly, then. Hopefully they can snuff out the danger. Well, one of the the, the key things for Raga will be, as you say, trying to trying to keep Burton out. It's one of the big contributors to Argyle's defensive setup is the man on screen at the minute, Michael Cooper. Um, he's been in absolutely tremendous form. Um, just looking through some of the saves that he made just last weekend, I think it was five big saves that he made in the game. Aaron, someone you know, someone you coached from a young age all the way through. And just going through these these saves that we're seeing at the moment, it, it proves, it shows just how valuable he is to this side. He's he's been magnificent. You know, I think from from his from his early kind of league appearances, his debut and things like that. But more recently, he's just been outstanding. And what what's particularly impressive about him is he he makes really hard things look easy. He's made a number of saves, um, not only last week, but the game against Exeter. And I spoke to him after the game and, and I thought one of the saves against Exeter was was top draw. And to, to you and I, it might it looks particularly easy because he makes it look so easy. But when you actually you know, reflect on it, it's an extremely difficult thing to do. Um, I think his ability to cover his box when the ball's coming in from the wide channels is particularly impressive. Um, and he's just been so consistent. I think that's you know this testament to his him his his approach to his game and how effective he's been and it's no coincidence that Argyll are, are sat top of the league because of the impact he's having. Um, had he you know had half of those goals gone in, we could have easily found ourselves kind of you know in and around fourth, fifth, maybe sixth place. Well, yeah, and on that point, let's just have a look at these stats. So, of the eighteen matches played in the league, seven clean sheets, which is is not near the top, actually, to be honest, considering the starts of the season we made. But that's that bottom stat: sixty five saves that he's made um, in those eighteen matches puts him second in the in the most saves in the league. And normally, a side that's sitting top of the table, you know, and with our girls' defensive record, doesn't have that many shots that they have to face. And that sort of emphasises your point, Aaron, that without him and without some of the saves that he has made, we probably wouldn't be top of the table. No, and and, and Coops is, is such a humble lad. Uh, he'll say, well, that's my job. That's what I'm there to do, which essentially it is. But I think, you know, those those stats don't lie. And it just showcases his diversity as a goalkeeper as well. It's not just shots right in front of the goal that he's having to save. It's it's the variation and, and the instincts he's having to overcome and, and 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 apply and it's and I know I spoke to him about a month ago and I said what's the one thing you've been working on the most recently um to kind of you know improve your overall profile and, and the other thing was about coming for crosses as well so having more of a presence um I think he'll openly admit for for a tradition and that's the bits that he's he's you know adding to his game and it's just as a as someone who's worked with him from a young age, it's just a joy to watch, and you know I wish him all the all the best for the future, wherever that future takes him. Hopefully, he stays here for as long yeah. as he can. You know, going to stay hopefully with us, Aaron. Absolutely. Um, the other the other you know big big factor of Argyle's form this season. There's so many, but but it is Stephen Schumacher, and and we saw at the beginning him talking about signing this new deal and the pride that he has in being Argyle manager. And we've seen his name linked with a couple of championship jobs this season, um, Huddersfield and and West Brom most notably. But every time there's a, a change of job in the championship, his name seems to be put near the top of the list. And there's always a bit of a fear. You know, we saw Ryan Lowe leave last season and seen it in the past. And when you're doing so well, you don't want, to, you don't want your manager to go. Now, this contract, as well as being a statement from him to say that he's committed, is a statement from the club as well to say, we're committed to you and we love what you're doing. We want you to stay. How good is it for Ragal that, that that has been finalised? Well, I think it, it it kind of quashes any rumours about where whether he potentially might go. Um, and I think it's a fantastic um, piece of news because it also shows the belief and the faith the club have in, in Chewy to take the club forward. And, you know, it's no coincidence, again, why the, why the team's doing so well um, because of his drive and his direction. And hopefully he can be the person that can take, you know, the club to the, the new division next year, which is the championship. Um, and I think it shows Chewy's kind of commitment to, to the club and his intentions as well to sign a, a more, an extended contract, which is more of a long-term contract now. Shows the fact that he's settled here. He loves what he does. Um, 
And, you know, we're very lucky to have someone like that at this, you know, at this football club. From coach to coach then, Aaron, what is it about the gaffer? What is it about Steven Schumacher that impresses you most, do you think? He strikes me as someone that wants to improve people, not just the players. He wants to improve the people that are working around him. And for me, that's the difference between a leader and a manager. I think a manager gets people to do and a leader gets people to want to do. And he's created an environment, not only with the players, but the backroom staff where people want to do well for this football club. And I think if you've got people wanting to do well as often as they can, you're going to get a, an operation or a culture that is going to be really positive. And, and, it's, and that goes without saying because of the number of changes he's made recently in games that have turned the game. Mm. So bringing players off the bench, you know, sometimes see that as a negative. I'm on the bench. I've been, you know, relegated to the bench, but they're not. They're coming on to finish the game. Um, and I think the way in which he's dealt with that, that's a personable thing. He's clearly spoken to those individuals to say, look, you're, you've got an integral part to play when you're called upon, be ready. And you've got players helping each other to, to get to that pinnacle. And it's, you know, you only have to look at the stats, the number of goals that have been shared. No one's relying on the same person week in, week out. And I think the byproduct of, of the great things Shuey's doing is the fact that they're top of the table. Absolutely. Long may it continue as well. Right. Coming up in the next couple of minutes, we'll be hearing from Ryan Hardy. We'll also be looking at the women's game tomorrow against Ipswich Town and refreshing us on the team news ahead of kickoff. Don't go anywhere. Watching Argyle TV, we're building up to the Greens uh, Skybet League One fixture with Burton Albion. A reminder that you can watch the game wherever you are in the world today due to the World Cup taking place over the next month or so. Um, the three o'clock rule has been relaxed and broadcasting uh, regulations have been loosened somewhat. So all the matches that have been taking, uh, taking place during the World Cup period for us will be able to stream. You'll be able to watch it. Uh, so you can buy your match pass now for today's game. It's just £10 if you're not lucky enough to be at the Pirelli Stadium. All of the streaming details can be found on our website, pafc.co.uk. Uh, and just click on the Argyle TV tab and the streaming options will be there for you. Um, we're, we're getting close to kickoff, of course. Now, one person who's not in the starting lineup but has been involved heavily, and as Aaron was saying, been part part of the goals this season is Ryan Hardy. He is uh, looking forward to this one again because he feels that everyone is up in their game against Argyle at the moment. And it's a new challenge that he and his teammates are relishing. Looking back at last weekend, how how crucial was it actually to come away with a point from that match? Definitely. Um, it was never going to be an easy game going there. Lincoln are in good form. Um, I've got a real good home record this season, similar to us. Um, so now I think a point point's going to be massive and it could be a game that we look back on for sure. Mm, it, it does seem at the moment as well, especially the last few games, we're a target now, aren't we? Clubs clubs raise their performances when they play us. Do you see that as a as a win? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just a credit to us um, how we are playing. They've got to raise their game to, to get on the, the standards that we're setting. So, as you say, that everybody plays it as a cup final playing top of the league so for us it's just that challenge that challenge as well we've got to go and take it to them when you you know we've been on the flip side of that sometimes when we've been playing against the side that's top of the league or a side that's in the higher division so do you understand how they are probably feeling going into it thinking well if we're the first team to beat them in this run yeah sort of thing yeah of course um as you said if you're going to play a team that's either higher than in the league or if it's a cup game against a team above you always want to prove prove your worth i suppose and just to show that they're not just there, you know, just in the competition, you want to be up there as well, and that's where you want to be. So, I think we've set down a big target for clubs, um, and as you said, everybody's raising their game against us. But it's good; it's a good challenge for us. Yeah. How how do you overcome that then? I think we just need to keep setting our standards. We set our standards high every week, um, training every day. We we uh, demand a lot of each other, so I think we take that into the game, and it, and it's been shown lovely. Um, we we don't get too upset if we lose a goal, but. 
Um, we always know that we can get back into the game, but um, ultimately we want to start keeping a few more clean sheets again, um, and that'll help us win more games. So, no, it's it's um, it's, a, it's a, another big game coming up, as everyone is. What is that feeling like that you've just said? Because we've scored in every single league game, top scorers in the league. Like if you if you do go behind, for example, the belief that you will score. What is it like knowing that eventually we'll get that chance, get that goal? I think it's just it's credit to everybody because nobody nobody gets their head down. As I said, um, obviously we're disappointed and angry with losing goals, but um, nobody gets their head down. We know that we'll get chances in the game. We've got players that can create things. Um, and as a striker, that's what you want. You want you want um, you want to be getting chances in games, and then it's ultimately up to us to um, to get the ball in the net. And if it isn't, you guys, it's Adam Randall at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So <laughs> I think there was only about five five or six players that had been scoring, but Rans has started joining in the fun. So um, now it's it's really good to see him scoring. Um, I think I said to him a couple of weeks ago before he did start scoring, I said, "Shoot, you've got mm. one of the best shots I've seen. That in training, he does it every day." So. I'm glad that he started shooting for outside the box now and he's shown that the quality he has. There are some unbelievable hits, aren't they? There is, yeah. I wish I could do it through. <laughs> <laughs> um, ju- just quickly on Burton specifically, um, they're second bottom, but they've, they've, they've got, again, a bit like Lincoln last season, they've got a, a kind of weird record where they've, they've drawn quite a few games, they score quite a few goals, they can see quite a few goals. How do you guys... How do we see them at the moment? We just need to set up as if it's any other game. Um, we go there to try and get the three points as we do every game. We'll, we'll analyse them. Um, we'll work today and tomorrow on on a um, shape and style of play that could that we think will hurt them. So, as I say, we do a lot of in-depth detail and analysis and um, a lot of video work on what they do. So, now nah, we'll, we'll work hard today and tomorrow, and then hopefully we'll get it done. Ryan Hardy talking there uh, ahead of today's game. Obviously not involved from the starting lineup, but could well be a huge part to play in the game. Aaron, he was talking about um, the fact that Argyle are now the side to beat. Teams are raising their games against them and it's he sees it as a challenge. I mean, it is something that Argyle maybe aren't necessarily used to, but it does feel like like they are... You know, they're, they're coping with it OK at the moment. That They seem to be. I mean, they're at the pinnacle of the league. So, you know, they're in, I wouldn't say uncharted territory. They were here this time last year. Um, so and they've got to take those those challenges in their stride, essentially. Um, and I think it's a welcomed compliment to the capability of this football team at the minute. Um, and that's that's what, you know, Shuey and, and the backroom staff have got to do. They've got to make preparations to to withstand teams raising their games. Um, and it wouldn't, I'm not surprised that in recent weeks, teams have probably played the best um, style of football that they've had all year against the league leaders, which is what we are. So, um, yeah, so they've got to they've got to overcome those challenges often now, I think, which is a good thing. The other big thing that he was talking about was was Adam Randall. We're watching a few of his goals here. Another player that you you, you coached and know really well. Um, I think three in his last five. He has been contributing goals. They're all very similar. <laughs> Smashes from the edge of the box that are that are flying in. It, it's good to see him finally kind of finding his scoring boots because he's looking at these goals. You think why hasn't he scored more? We all know he's got that technical technical ability, don't we? He's had it f- for a very, very long time. And I, I mean, I've known Adam since he was 11. And um, I remember when he first came into the academy and, you know, he was he, he was, a, he was a dot, really. He was physically really underdeveloped and he was this little kind of skinny, scrawny little player. But I remember speaking to Stoney in Stonebridge about him and, and he, he came over and he said, have you seen this lad? And I said, let's go and have a look. And, you know, his head was on a swivel as he was in his training sessions physically he would get overrun a little bit but he knew what he was doing and and he had the technique to go with it um him and I speak quite regularly and I I spoke to him about a month ago about you know his stats and he's he's now an established player of this of this team so um he needs to just trust himself a bit more um and it it will come naturally you know so we we spoke about how well he strikes a ball is with his pass range and and why not use that same principle with shooting um and if you look at those goals there whilst they are from distance they're not lashed really they're just struck quite cleanly and that's why he's getting the returns he is and he's always had the capability um we just needed to let his you know patience take its toll and 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 give him the chances 
just very quickly on on today as well. So if it is what we think, looking at that lineup, it looks like he might be playing the further forward of the midfield three. We've never, like, as a as a fan base, seen him play in that sort of position. You know him. Is it something that he'd he'll be able to do? How do you see him slotting into that that role? I think um, he, he will definitely have the capability. He just needs to have the trust in his own capability. You know, I always described him as a 360 degree player, so he could deal with pressure in front, behind and on the side. So if he can um, withstand that that challenge this afternoon, I think we'll, we'll see a slightly different style to his play, but he's got the capability because he's got the physical attributes as well. And he's got the brain to go with it. You know, going back to his early days, he, he had such a good footballing brain and it was always a case of imagine dropping his brain into an athlete and now we've got it. Um, he just needed a bit of time to grow. And and I think he's got that capability of scoring, you know, 10 a season at least because, or at least contributing 10 goals because of what he brings His intelligence. Football IQ is extremely high and um, he's got the execution to go with it as well. Be high time he scores a goal in a win though, isn't it? Sorry? High time he scores a goal in a win. Absolutely, yeah. So if he's going to score, he's got to actually make sure it's, you know, worthy of three points, not just gaining a point or even another defeat. So, yeah, that's the next level for him. So he's got to do it. Let's hope that's today. Um, right, just marking your card, slightly changing direction a little bit, looking ahead to tomorrow. Um, and uh, Ryan Perks and his Argyle women's side have, have a game at Home Park. First one at Home Park this season. They're playing Ipswich Town in the FA Women's National League. Uh, tickets are still available for it. You can find all the details at argyletickets.com. But let's find out about how much they're looking forward to playing at the Theatre of Greek. Um, I started coming with my granddad when I was uh, probably about seven or eight. Um, and then eventually started to go with my dad, my uncle and my brother who set up in the Lindhurst. So I've been coming for years. Yeah, it's um, always a really exciting occasion to be able to play at Home Park. It's such a good pitch, a stadium with really good memories. And I think it's really good for the girls to have that as well, to be able to experience playing on Home Park. I think as players, something that will make us really happy seeing younger girls and boys, obviously, uh, coming to watch our game. Um, I've got quite a few people from there I know that are coming to watch and are really excited. And I think as players, because we do all see comments on our social media, some of the nicer, comments that we get is I think one of the recent ones I've seen is someone read, uh, has written that was the first time I watched the women's team and I'm definitely going to be coming back and watch the, you know, the game against the Ipswich at home park. So when I saw that comment I think that really made me happy and I hope there's more people like this. I think most people is they haven't given women's football a chance and this is something we hopefully will change and if they come I think they, they will enjoy it. We will not let them down. It, it does make a difference, to be honest. Women's football in itself, like you don't have access to those facilities, and obviously we've been quite fortunate to have that here and be at home park. I feel like, yeah, um, it's nice for me personally as well. Like I've played in some stadiums, but like with Plymouth Argyle, like playing for them and then being introduced into the whole home park situation, I think, yeah, it's ideal. <laughs> it's really, really nice. I can't lie. I feel like we're in a sort of pivotal moment in women's football at the moment where. Um, after the summer we've just had, it's really important that we can be sort of like the women's team in Plymouth and in Devon uh, that people want to come and see and they want to sort of get behind us and it will hopefully continue to inspire the little girls playing now. We're for everyone, we're not just for women, we're not just for girls. I think we need to prove that we can get all the Argyle fans. Like if you support Argyle, I think you should be coming to support us and hopefully uh, yeah, everyone gets behind us and we get a good result couple of days out, Ryan, from a game against Ipswich at Home Park. How are you? How are the players looking forward to it? Yeah, for us, we're just preparing as a normal game. Obviously, it's great to play at Home Park, but for us on the pitch, it's the same setup. It's the same weekly build-up to a game. We look at the other team's strengths and weaknesses, look at what we need to improve on from the weekend. Um, obviously, we had a really positive result on Sunday, which has given us the confidence coming into this Sunday at Home Park. Yeah, there's probably not a lot you've got to improve from the weekend, is there? No, um, we switched off for about 10 minutes and let Cheltenham back into the game towards the end, but then the girls switched back on and got the fourth goal, which killed the game. And there was 13 minutes, I think, added on, which I don't know where the referee got that from, but, yeah, a little bit of a sweaty period towards the last 10 minutes. But, yeah, like you say, got over the, got over the line and got the job done, but very good performance. Yeah, and you've spoken quite a lot this season about putting full 90-minute performances together and... 
Sunday look like it was as close to, to that happening? Yeah, we've done that for the last three games, really. Even the games before against Bullerick and Portsmouth, I think overall performances have been good. I said to the girls before Sunday's game, I can't keep saying performance levels are good and not getting results. We've got to start turning those performances into victories. And we've done that Sunday, so hopefully we can continue that this weekend. Yeah, and on this weekend, you said in the, in the first answer about trying to keep it as normal as possible. I mean, it, it, how easy is that to do for you as, as a coach? Because it, it is at home park, it's at a different location, there are going to be more fans, there's a bigger feel around it. How, how tough is that for you to just maintain normality? Yeah, it's been quite easy. The girls are quite grounded, so they're not, obviously they are looking forward to playing here and know that it's going to be a bigger crowd than normal. Um, but like we've just tried to allude to them, um, it is just a game of football. Um, we've got to focus on doing a job and giving a good account of ourselves so those people who are coming in want to come back and watch us again. So we had a difficult game here last year against Ipswich, but we've got a better squad. I think we're going to compete a lot more this, this time out at Home Park, so hopefully we can give a good account of ourselves on Sunday. Yeah, as I said, tickets still available. 2 p.m. kickoff tomorrow at Home Park, Argyle against Ipswich Town. Um, ArgyleTickets.com is a place to get them. Eight pounds for adults, five for under 23s, and under 18s go free. So, no excuse. If you're in the area, the weather's good. Get along. It'll be great uh, to to see Argyle women at Home Park for the first time this season. This is Argyle TV. We're 20 minutes away from kickoff at the Pirelli Stadium uh, for the game between Burton Albion and Plymouth Argyle. Remind you, you can stream this match wherever you are in the world on Argyle TV. Uh, just £10 is what it will cost you. All of the details can be found on our website, pafc.co.uk. Click on the Argyle TV tab and you'll be able to find all of the streaming information and how to buy your match pass there. Let's very quickly head into the Burton camp now and hear from their manager, Dino Marmaria. Took over from Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank a couple of months ago and it's fair to say he's excited about this game. It gets easier. I love those games. I think all of us at Burton Albion love those games. We're playing against Plymouth. Top of the league, they're flying. We're all in. Uh, the back of last week's performance, uh, we're going to go for it. Uh, we're going to go for it from minute one, like we always do. I think uh, our form at home, we've been picking points. I think last time we, we lost the game was against Fleetwood, I think, and hopefully we learned a lot from that. And our home form is is massive for us. We we care so much about it because we want to make sure, especially at home, uh, we care about all our performance, but especially at home, we want to make this place our fortress and. Uh, our fans, they want to come here, they want to get excited, they want to, you know, cheer the lads on. And, um, and I think based on last week, uh, everybody enjoyed the performance, uh, how we started the game. Unfortunately, the two goals we conceded, but then we came back to the game and the, the spirit, the togetherness, the resilience, the character of the team to come back from 2 nil down. Again, similar to against Forest Green, and uh, it was fantastic to see, and that's how far we've come as a team. Um, it was unfortunate to concede that third goal for uh, for equaliser, but that really doesn't take anything away from the performance of uh, La Sarte. Um, they only lost twice. Um, what is it do you think that's so good about Plymouth, and why are they performing so well against some very big clubs uh, who were perhaps expected to get? Well, the answer is simple for me. I think uh, I think that that team has been together three, four years now. Uh, the same structure the same shape they've been playing, more or less the same players, 80% of them the same player they had for the last two or three years. And so that continuity, that consistency uh, with players and system of play uh, has been key for them. Obviously, Schumacher was assistant to, uh, to Lowy there. Lowy moved on. He kept them in a brilliant position and Schumacher carried on the same work that they've been building for the last four years. So that's the... That's what you get when you have that continu continuity at, at a football club. And, uh, and all what they do is every season they add two or three key players to strengthen their team. So now they look like uh, the real deal. 
and they are top of the league, they rightly so, but I think if you, in the short, in the short answer is uh, that continuity, see that they've been together for, for probably three or four years now, and that's key for them. So is the key to find weaknesses in, in, in what they do, or is it to concentrate on what we do and, and do it exceptionally well? Well, we have to, they're top of the league for a reason, they got the threats, uh, they got front line, that clinical, that uh, they mixed, they, they, they can mix it, they can go behind, they got play to hold it up. They, they got a good balance in their team. Obviously, we've got to make sure that we're ready for that. Uh, and, uh, and, and then we, they got to worry about our game as well, because we're going to, our game is always at home. We're going to play with energy, we're going to play on, we'll be on the front foot, uh, we'll be going all in, uh, like every time, it doesn't matter who we play against. We're going to approach it the same way we approached last week. Tino Marmaria there. Mar Maria there, the Burton manager, makes you want to clear his clear your throat, doesn't it? Listening to him, he's very hoarse. That's what he's like on the on the sideline. But he's looking forward to this one. Um, let's get a, a refresh of today's team news very quickly. Here's the Argyle side: uh, three changes made by Stephen Schumacher, uh, Macaulay Gillespie, Matt Butcher, and uh, Sam Cosgrove coming in for Wilson Ennis and Hardy. Looks like it's going to be a change of formation as well with. Uh, Potentially a 4-2-3-1 for the Greens. Good to see Mikel Miller back on the bench for Argyle as well. As for Burton, they've made four changes from the side that drew with Charlton. Uh, one of them is in goal with uh, Garrett coming back in for Sinisalo. Uh, Mariapa, recalled to the starting lineup, could be there to bolster defensive options. There's also a uh, full debut for new signing Joe Dodu up front. Uh, let's quickly head across to the Pirelli Stadium and uh, have a chat with Rob McNichol, our man in position there. Hello, Rob. How are you? How is how is the Pirelli? Hi, Charlie. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, it's cold. It's actually quite dull where I am because the shadows are behind us. But uh, it's bright and it's cold. But as you can just probably see to behind me there, there's the Green Army making all their noise as the, uh, the players go and do their final bits of warm-up. Uh, we spoke a lot in the build-up, Rob, about Stephen Schumacher's new contract, the gaffer extending it. I imagine that was a probably a top of conversation for many of the Green Army on their way up to, to Burton today, making the journeys up, which I know has been really tricky for a lot of people. Um, but, you know, superb news, isn't it? You'd, you'd want to cap it with a win today. Yeah, absolutely. And I think what was, I think what was best for me was that because you... You were with me, Charlie. I was with you, should I say, when you were doing the Argyle TV interviews and stuff. Was, we know Shuri a little bit, but the way he spoke in those interviews, you could, I sense his voice cracking once or twice where he's genuinely emotional about the job that he's doing and the fact that he's even been given the chance at Argyle just under a year ago. And I thought it was really interesting that he talked not only about staying at Argyle or signing the contract to stay at Argyle, but also talking about the city and the people. I think that's, I think that's part of it. I don't think it's the... It's the 90 minutes on the Saturday with Shiri. I think he's fallen in love with Plymouth and, and uh, you know, really, really appreciates the Green Army's backing at somewhere like this where, you know, we sold out 1,700 tickets by Tuesday of the week. So um, I think as much as the news, which obviously was great, as you say, I thought some of the things that went alongside it were uh, just as encouraging for me. Absolutely, Rob. Thanks a lot for your time again, as always. We'll let you get back to it. I uh, can hear the Green Army in full voice at the Pirelli Stadium. Always a fantastic sound, isn't it? When when you're away from home, you can hear the, the, the crowd like that. Just a final thought from you, Aaron, on, on today's game. How do you see it going? How, how tough is it going to be for Argyle, do you think? Well, I think, like we, we spoke about earlier, like, you know, um, Burton are in an element of form, so they've got to perhaps withstand the early pressure. And then I think as long as they, they settle into their, to their rhythm and, and trust themselves, as they have done all year, um, there's no reason why they can't get a positive result. Um, obviously, it will depend on the formation, what how they set up, and you know how those battles will unfold as as the game progresses. But in particular, I know that Shuey and, and and the guys in the backroom staff will have an alternative plan should Plan A quite not quite go to plan. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully, a good three points, and we can continue on 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 that stride towards the championship. Fingers crossed, absolutely. Just a, a reminder that we'll be keeping you up to date with all the other games that are being played in uh, the division today. Plenty of other games on. Of course, Portsmouth and Derby drew 0-0 yesterday and Exeter City were beaten by Ipswich 2-0 in the early kickoff. So uh, that means that Argyle have a one-point advantage at the top of the table. Uh, but all eyes will be on the Sheffield Wednesday Shrewsbury game at the bottom as well. Five points, the difference between third place Sheffield Wednesday and Argyle, top of the table. Just time to read a couple of comments 
uh, coming in from everybody at home. Interesting ones. Lots of positivity, Aaron. Here's one from uh, from the Ronaldo shoe. What he calls of themselves. 4-0. Cooper penalty save. Mumba, Cosgrove, Lonvike and Hardy off the bench. Uh, YT Shark says 3-0. Hoping that's for Argyle. Um, just trying to find some other predictions that are coming in. Uh, here's another comment again from the same same person. Cooper's been in amazing form, been so consistent. Um, he'll save a penalty. Lots of penalty chat coming in. And there's one here from Tom Martin. Thanks a lot for it. Um, Charlie, when are you going to take on the green in 30, 30 seconds quiz? Green is 60 seconds. That's what it's called, Tom. It's our podcast quiz. When am I going to do it myself? I'm not going to do it. Uh, that's a, the simple answer. Far too difficult. Anyway, a reminder, commentary coming up very, very soon here on Argyle TV. Uh, you can watch it wherever you are in the world. £10 is all it's going to cost you. Head on to our website, pafc.co.uk, click on the Argyle TV tab, and it will uh, explain how you can buy your match pass there. Aaron and I will be heading upstairs to provide the commentary for that game in just a second. But don't go anywhere, because Argyle against Burton Albion. It's coming up next. <laughs> 